All right, everybody, good morning. Again, my name is Mike Turner. I work in the Will Call Showroom Department of Pro Sound and Stage Lighting. Today, we're going to be talking about DMX. In fact, I will go so far as to call this DMX 101. I don't care if you're an old school DJ who's been spinning records longer than I've been alive. Lighting is something that you're still going to need these days. I'm sure you've had your customers ask for it, and I know it's intimidating because it was intimidating for me before I started working here. When somebody told me the word DMX, I thought they were talking about a retired rapper. Well, it's something completely different. So, what we're going to do is make sure that you are on the same page with everyone else who's getting these big gigs. And the point of this is to make sure that you can figure out how to use your lights so you don't have to be afraid of it anymore and how you can make money. So, we'll go ahead and get started and explain some basics. Back in the day, back when Jimi Hendrix was performing and you saw all the lights on the stage, there was no DMX back then. It was actually called AMX. It stood for Analog Multiplex. It was a simple two-channel cable that was not very efficient, that essentially what would happen is you could control whether the light was on or off or whether or not it was dimmed. That was it. If you wanted color changing, you were forced to put a color gel in front of the light, and when you wanted your stage to be green, you would turn off all the other lights and then simply leave the green lights on and so on and so forth. So, they found out something more advanced than that that will actually handle 512 channels of DMX. This is actually called Digital Multiplex, okay? The way this works, you take a DMX cable, which, yes, it looks exactly like a microphone cable, but it is not. These pins do something very, very different. They actually have a less impedance on it, which allows them to travel, or allows all that data to travel through this cable. Now granted, yes, you could use a microphone cable to run your DMX lighting. However, when you get to about the fifth, maybe tenth light, things will start acting funny because the cables aren't designed to have that much information transferring through them. So that's why you do want to stick to a DMX cable, okay? <laughs> DMX lighting is oftentimes referred to as intelligent lighting. And the reason why they say it's intelligent lighting is each light has a personality. That personality can be referred to as the amount of channels that the light will use to actually make it operate. So for instance, your typical LED parkan like this one will usually have seven channels. The first channel is typically going to be your ratio of red color. Your second channel is going to be your ratio of green. Your third channel is going to be your ratio of blue. Your fourth is typically going to be the master dimmer. The fifth will usually control something along the lines of a strobing effect and the rate of strobe. Uh, the fifth will usually be color macros that are built within the light. The sixth will often, often be uh, something along the lines of pre-programs built within the light and the seven and so on and so forth. So when you have lights that use multiple channels, that kind of throws a wrench in the gears of how do we figure out how to use these? Well, I'm going to give you another example. Each light that you use, you're going to essentially have to give it, I apologize, you're going to have to give it an address. That address is basically giving the light a name. When you're giving the light a name, I'll give you the analogy here. You, the controller, are essentially the teacher. Your lights are the class. When you want to talk to certain lights, you would then call them out and the lights essentially raise their hand. So for instance, if this light was called Bobby and I said I want to talk to the Bobbies, if I had other lights named Bobby, I would only be talking to the lights named Bobby, not the lights named John or Steve or any of the other names here. So to put this back into real perspective, this particular fixture would be addressed at channel one. What that would mean, it doesn't mean it only has channel one. It essentially means that's the first light in my DMX address. This particular fixture has seven channels. Now, this can get extremely confusing. The reason why I say this, let's say that you've got three channels on one light. Another light uses seven channels. Maybe you've got an intelligent moving head or a scanner that has 13 or 14 channels. It gets really confusing on how to figure out how to address the light. So we've developed a chart that's going to be available for download and print. Just click on the link down below and you'll be able to print this out and do the same thing I'm showing you here. Now, you don't have to do it this way, but this is just the way that I've learned to do it and it's helped me keep everything in line. Now, the first thing before we even get into this 
it's important that you read the owner's manual that should have been provided with your light to first find out how many channels of DMX that light take up. And the reason why is some lights have three channels, some have seven scanners, sometimes have 13 or 14 channels. So it's important to figure out how many channels you're going to use for the light so that you can adequately map it. Now, another thing to remember, some lights can operate in different channel modes. For instance, you can set it to operate in a three channel mode, but it may actually run off of seven channels if you want. My recommendation would be to operate the light in a seven channel mode simply because you, you don't want to not use all the channels that the light offers and not get the full potential of what you paid for in the light. So just some food for thought there. Now we're going to go ahead and pretend we're using RGB three channel LED park hands. Okay. We're going to say that we're running four of them. So what we would do is we know our light takes up four channel or sorry three channels so we're going to go ahead and cross out three channels the second light we start here third light we start here and fourth light we would start here now the reason why I think it's kind of important to map this out is it'll help you see where the starting addresses are that you would need to give the lights. So for your first light, we know it's channel one. For the second light, we know it's channel four. I'm not gonna try to write four upside down. <laughs> the third light, we know it's channel seven. Fourth light is channel 10. And just again, for the sake of uh, educating you guys here, Let's say the next light that we were going to program in our DMX chain was going to be a five channel light. Again, we would still pick up where we left off, except we're just utilizing five full channels. Now, again, where this is helpful, I know that the next light starts at channel 13, except this time we obligated five, or five channels of DMX for that light. So we know that if we were to again add another light, since it stops there, our next light would start at channel 18. So what I wanted you guys to be able to see is how you can map up this whole chart here of 512 channels and be able to easily see what the starting address is for your light, how much room you have left in your DMX universe, and how you can make this work and be able to control all your lights at the same time. Another thing that I want to try to tell people that is going to make life easier on you Park hands, people usually don't have just one. They usually buy them in pairs. So we'll give the analogy that you have 10 PAR lights. Maybe you want all those lights to do the same thing at the same time. Well, you've got a couple options. You can use a DMX controller that will allow you to speak to 10 fixture, fixtures at the same time and then work them all at the same time. Or you can simply address all 10 lights as channel one or whatever starting address you're looking to use. So again, given the analogy that I used with the students, if I have 10 lights and I'm all calling them Bobby, then every time I want to talk to Bobby, all 10 lights will do the same thing. So you could see that you're not necessarily limited to just 512 channels of DMX. If you have a bunch of lights that are all the same and you want them to do the same thing, you could easily put 100 plus lights as channel one, and that's only gonna take up one fixture or three channels in this analogy here on your DMX universe. So I don't want to say you're unlimited, but the limit's pretty far out there. So next thing I want to do, now that we know what to address our lights, I want to show you how to actually do it. Now, before I get into that, each light is going to have its own little menu sequence on the back of the light that will allow you to speak to the light and give it the address. So, uh, today, I'm going to be using a very common light by American DJ. This is their Megapar profile. On the back of the light, you'll see that this is flashing. It's flashing because I haven't set this yet. So what I'm going to simply do is hit mode a few times. Okay. I'm going to run this as a typical three channel light because I'm only going to be controlling the red, green, and blue. So I'm going to actually go down to C, channel three. I'm going to address this as one again because on this is my first light in my chain here 
I'm addressing this as channel 1. Now, I'm going to connect this light with this DMX cable to a DMX controller. By the way, this is the Obey 40 DMX controller by Chave. Uh, you get eight faders here for your channels. You have a bank up and down that will allow you to get another uh, eight channels, giving you a total of 16. Over here, you'll see that you can control up to 12 fixtures of 16 channels. Here is where you would store your scenes and so forth. But again, right now we're at the basics, so I'm not going to worry about that. So from the back of this, I'm simply plugging in the DMX cable. And then on the back of the light, I'm plugging in the DMX cable there as well. Okay. So one thing you will see now is that when I turn this on, I will actually have control over this light. So, as you'll see, my first channel is red. My second channel is going to be green. My third channel is going to be blue. Knowing this, you would use those channels to make your own colors. So, for instance, we know if we want a purple, traditionally you mix equal parts red and blue. So I'm going to turn up my red and blue, giving me a purple. If I want it to be a deeper purple, I would again remove some of, the, uh, some of the red out of it to give me a deeper purple. So here's where you make money from this. I know a lot of you guys are doing weddings, and we've all dealt with a bridezilla or two. The best way to help get this gig to be completely honest, is to make sure that your lights are not only entertaining, but they're also elegant, and that they complement the wedding versus just adding a bunch of flashing lights. So, what you do is when you're setting up the gig, and this is going to be a really big tip for you guys, you ask the bride and groom to bring a swatch of the uh, bridesmaid's dress, or to bring something along, picture or something that will allow you to know what the colors are of the wedding. The reason why I suggest this. When you meet them at the Starbucks, or at your living room, their living room, wherever it is that you're doing the initial consultation, I want you to bring your LED park in. And I want you to bring a DMX control. And the reason why I say this, once you've already pitched your, DM, your uh, DJ services, and you're going to pitch this lighting, a lot of people don't understand how that can affect their wedding. What we do is we ask the bridemaid how we would feel if we could somehow make the entire room match the bridesmaid's dresses or the colors of the wedding. So again, with your DMX controller, you would actually just dial in that color right in front of her. I'm going to do pink. As you can see now, we have a variation of pink. You do this at a Starbucks or if you do this at, at, you know, at, at somebody's house and you uplight the wall, she visually gets to see and start to imagine what that's going to look like. And I guarantee, provided they have room within their budget, <laughs> or maybe they're going to find more room, they're going to buy your lighting package. So you can see where your doors are being completely opened here. Imagine an entire room now where you can make it match the bridesmaid's dress. Or, you know, let's take it out of the wedding scenario. Let's say uh, you're doing somebody's birthday party or a quinceanera. You know, go the extra mile and ask the person who's hiring, hey, you know, what's the birthday girl or boy's favorite color? You know, find this out in ahead of time. If they say it's a boy and maybe he likes green, make his whole party green, you know? Or maybe their favorite color is kind of an aqua. Either way, the point that I want you guys to have is that you can control your lights now. It doesn't take a lighting genius. You don't have to hire a lighting engineer, and it's something that's very simple. You just have to remember the few basic principles, and you'll be controlling light shows like a pro in no time. All right, guys, well, make sure you check the link below for the download of the PDF version of this. That way you can print it out and start using this. Uh, again, that's really, really helpful. In time, maybe you won't need this. You'll be able to just remember, but this will really help you map out your light show beforehand and keep track of it. And again, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll definitely be able to help you, and we'll talk to you soon.